Hello. Hi, is this Denise? Hi. Hi. All right. Well, let me do the official introduction, ladies and gentlemen. We are very excited to welcome our featured guest for the evening. Uh, people who grew up around the 80s used to know her as Vanity, and now she is joining us to share her story with us, which is an amazing and blessed one. We're very excited to welcome Miss Denise Matthews to the show. You're on the air live with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome to the show, Denise. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you. I appreciate you calling me. Well, I want to let you know, Denise, uh, you've talked to my daughter many times, and this is the first time I've had a chance to talk to you. And I've tried to get you on the show for a couple of years. I'm so glad you're here. I want to let you know on a personal note that when I had my daughter first call you, she was kind of in a bad place herself and was kind of down. And through getting to know you on the phone and through kind of drawing off of your own personal strength, she really herself is in a much happier place now, and, and you know, God bless you for that. Oh, that's wonderful. Praise the Lord. I love getting, uh, that's such an encouraging word, amen. It encourages me that, uh, that it just, I know my life story, it really touches people's hearts, amen. It, it, it causes them to, uh, you know, how do you say, run after Jesus even harder and, uh, you know, I get a lot of, and just thinking about that, I just came back from Alaska. Mm. Alaska, and I just did Philadelphia. And um, it was wonderful. Well, fantastic. And, um, and because, you know, I have I have no kidneys. I don't know if you know that, but I have no kidneys. I haven't had any kidneys for 20 years. But people always want to know, where do you get that energy? Where do you, why are you always so happy? And, you know, I've been, I've been uh, walking in the, or showing and running, raving in the fullness of joy with Jesus. For the, about the last three years, God has just, um, you know, taken me to a place. And it was after I'd come home from the hospital, and I had three and a half months in the hospital, and they didn't feed me. So you can imagine how tiny I was, how, how skinny I was. And um, I had many surgeries. And, and I had come home, and I was I was just, how do you say, flabbergasted by all that had happened to me and, and, and looking in the mirror, I'd lost a lot of hair. I, I was just so, uh, so, mor so morose, so uh, sad in the face of God. And, and, and I remember I was, I was sitting on my couch where I'm sitting right now and I said to Jesus, I said, Lord, look at me. I had come from looking at myself in the in the mirror, and I was just, I oh, was just so sad by by what was looking back at me, and um, I was like as skinny as my ankle, all over my body, and and I I said, look at me, Jesus, don't you love me? And I was I, I was so depressed. I hadn't been depressed like that in years, and and Jesus said to me, uh, He spoke to me, and I heard him clearly. He said to me. And, and I got up out of the, off of the couch and he said, and I was crying and he said, Denise, I want you to come into my fullness of joy. And I stopped crying. I was like, huh? <laughs> just, that just didn't make no sense at all. And he said, yes, I want you to come into my fullness of joy. And I went into the fullness of joy. I said, okay. But I stopped crying. And, um, I tell you, I've been living in the fullness of joy ever since. And then I found out a year after that that the doctors didn't even have to cut me open whatsoever. And, you know, I don't have the heart to, uh, to, uh, trap anybody in, um, in, um, how do you say, uh, bringing them to court and suing them. I, I've never been able to do that. Um, and I always felt in my heart, you know, because I, I, when I was in the hospital, I ministered to so many people. I brought so many people to the Lord, to mm -hmm. Jesus. They would come by my room, the nurses, and they were like literally fighting over who was going to take care of me that day. <laughs> 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 and um, I brought um, uh, Muslims to the Lord. I brought the Jap the Asian people. I brought, uh, you name it, atheist people. Uh, and then I started to wonder, is this why I'm here? And it was just, 
is overwhelmed, they would they would say, "We hear that you're the lady that talks, that tells us all about ourselves, and and talks to God for us." <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I can talk to Jesus. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You, you know, I make, I make that a habit. <laughs> well, that's a good habit. It's a good habit, Denise. I wanted to know too. You say you have no kidneys. Was there any talk of ever doing a kidney transplant? Oh, I had a kidney transplant years ago. Something I'd never do again. That's that's personal, but you know, um, it was the worst thing that ever happened to me, and I, I wound up getting boils all over my body. They would they were giving me uh, really bad medicine. Just they were using me as a guinea pig, just testing new medicine out on me and stuff. It was, it was the worst thing. But you know, um, I have. Uh, I had said to the Lord in my heart when I first lost my kidneys, I said, and I was just a babe in Christ, and I said, Lord, Jesus, he can do anything. He can give me brand new kidneys. And I said that I told them that I would wait on him, you know. And then when kidneys came around, I didn't. But, you know, I've been waiting on him now, and I don't know how long it's been, but I've been waiting on him um, probably about 10 years. And uh, I'm, I'm believing God to bless me with kidneys from his own hand. Amen? And, um, you know, I have not had a sad day when I, since I've made up my mind. You know, I really do believe that when you walk in the fullness of joy, because I remember I used to cry out to God years ago, and I said, Lord Jesus, I, I want a kidney. Don't you want to give me a kidney? And, and this is when I was quite um, um, immature in my walk with the Lord. And Jesus says, Denise, you don't need kidneys. You need a new heart. Mm -hmm. And so that is what I continuously work on. And since I've been living in the fullness of joy, um, it's so, it's amazing. And I, and I it's a, the Lord says that that we should, our joy should remain and you know, when you come to a place in your life where, where, where in, in Jesus, where you you decide, okay, I, am, well, I live by two principles, mm -hmm. two of my biggest principles, and um, number one, acknowledge God in everything you're doing. He'll direct your path. He'll tell you what to do. And the the biggest, um, uh, the biggest, I think, uh, I, I think. The greatest thing that we could do is that in itself. Because if I ask you, if I ask God, can I do this? Can I say this? Can I? Should I answer the apology? Is this the time? But whatever that it may be, He'll always tell me the truth. But if I don't ask, and I'm always asking my own self, you know, my own my own self brings upon ego, and ego means edging God out. And my second. Uh, principle that I, I love to live by is everything is working for my good. Mm -hmm. When you, you, I live in the fullness of joy because I know everything that I have right now, everything is because of Jesus. And if I don't have it, it's because I don't need it. And I am very content with whatever that the Lord has for me. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Well, let I me don't. let me ask you. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Well, I wanted to ask you. I mean, uh, th we've seen so many uh, people, and, and you know, unfortunately, in in the U.S. society, media, everything makes celebrities, actors, singers into kind of like these false idols. Almost, they hold them on such a high pedestal. And we've seen so many people, including, you know, this this sad case that we had seen recently of what happened to Whitney Houston. We've seen so many people go through addiction and go through things like that, and they just kind of fall off the bandwagon, and they don't have the strength to pick themselves up, or they don't have the strength to, you know what, say, no, I'm going to turn away from fame and money and all of that kind of stuff, and I'm going to go in this direction. Yeah. How? Yeah. What is your comment on that? How did you find that strength, and, and what would be your advice to anybody, like maybe somebody who was like a well, Whitney when Houston? When Jesus told me to flee Egypt, I left. 
And again, whenever I, because, you know, for a couple of years, I was like, okay, well, am I going back to acting? Because I knew that um, I needed Jesus. I knew I wanted to get him first. And I didn't know if I was going back or if I wasn't. I, I, I began to ask him. You know, they began to, everybody was asking, when you coming back? I was offered movies. I was offered, every time that I went to Jesus to ask him, because that was one of the first things I was taught. Acknowledge God in all your ways, he'll direct your path. So every time I asked, he always said no. <laughs> so I was so afraid, you know, because, you see, I, I, I was facing death, just like a lot of these celebrities are facing, have faced death. But the difference was when Jesus told me to flee, I ran. I got out. Mm -hmm. I got out. And I didn't know if I was going back. I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to go back. I just kept asking the Lord. And so I lived by that. I just kept asking God, um, you know, can I do this film? They, were, they offered me millions of dollars even to, to, do my, uh, to take my book and make a movie of it. And Jesus would say, and the first time that that happened, Jesus said, touch not the unclean thing and I'll receive you. And, you know, that was like, oh, oh. I thought that was Satan talking. <laughs> huh. I said, it's going to be God. And, and the Lord, you know, he made it understood that it was him. And I thought Satan just didn't want to hear because I, I had any money. You know, you, you run out of money. You leave Hollywood you leave the, the work, you, you're out of money, and you're right. not working, you know what right. I'm saying? You run out of money. But um, what happened was, when we look at the case of, uh, of uh, Whitney Houston, I see this, this happening uh, um, so often. And, and you mentioned, like, I had a false idol, uh, you know, idol, idol to making idols of people. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. I, I knew that very well in my life. Um <clears throat> But I, I posted on Facebook, a lot of people didn't like what I said, but, um, you know, the fact is, what happens is, and we can see, because when I first saw Whitney, um, and, and I, I, I knew in my spirit something was wrong, because the Lord showed it to me. I was I was in dialysis, I had uh, the TV uh, turned on to the news, and, and I saw Whitney, and she just didn't look well. And in my spirit, I said, oh. And she reminded me of somebody that I knew very much like that, and she just didn't look well. And I, and, it, and it was the night before she died. It was the day before she died. And what happens is, and I see this a lot. I see it whether you're a celebrity, whether you're not. People that go, they say, okay, I'm just going for one last time. I'm just going to get high one last time, or I'm just going to sell drugs one last time, and they end up in jail. Right. <laughs> You know, or I'm just going to do drugs one last time, and they'll end up dead. And and it's a sad case, but we know in in the case with Jesus, when we have given our lives to Jesus, and let, let's say we're backslider, but we come to the Lord, we, uh, and we repent and we turn. But then we, we must remember that scripture that says seven greater demons are coming in your house when the house has been swept and cleaned, and they're going, they're coming to take you down. They're coming to see, check you out, what's really going on. Now, one of her last words were, because a lot of people were like, oh, she's going to heaven, she's going to heaven, she's going. I know my word, what my word tells me. Amen? And I know that the scripture says, he did overcome it, meaning I used to be a drug addict. I used to be a fornicator. I used to be a liar. I used to be, you know, you name it, I was it. Mm -hmm. But the scripture says, he did, over, he, he did overcome it, inherits the kingdom of God. I'll be his God, he'll be my, my son, but the fearful, the abominable, the whoremongers, the idolaters, the adultery, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie shall not. And that we're talking about practicing sin. We're not talking about, oh, I, I, I sinned and I turn around and I'm going to repent. God knows if you're coming. God knows if you're leaving. He knows all things. He's certainly not going to take you out if he knows you're coming, for real. Uh -huh. I mean, you're going to turn and you're going to repent. repent. Repentance means to turn. Her last word to her mother was, Mom, I just want to go and have fun for, you know, just this next week. I just want to go and have fun. 
and, uh, and then I'll, I'll check into rehab. Mm. That, you just opened up your mouth to the devil. Yeah. So you just, you, but you see, Jesus knows your heart. No man, no man, uh, no man can, can, uh, can um, decide when, in, in this kind of case we know. The Lord knows when you're coming. Well, it, it was really the unfortunate, Lord, too. No. It was really unfortunate yeah. because she had uh, a definite religious background with her mother, Sissy Houston, being into the gospel and everything, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me ask you this. You had, when you, but I'm certainly not going to tell kids, okay, hey, it's okay. You can just do drugs up until the time you die mm-hmm. because this is about overcoming. And I'm certainly not going to lie to young folks and say, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. Right. And you're just going to wind up in heaven. God's just going to take you. Just like, We know we cannot continue in practicing sin. Practicing sin does not enter into the kingdom of God. Right. Now, God knows who's, in, who's there and who's not there. But my job is to tell the young folks, don't continue in sin. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Amen? We're supposed to turn, and re- repentance means to turn. Amen? We cannot continue in fornication. You know, and I was a fornicator, but I, I'm a, I've been a virgin in Christ now. It's been almost, it's 14 years. Well, congratulations. And, and, and Amen. I, if I can stop fornicating, anybody can. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask Amen. you Let me ask you this, Denise. Uh, when you first came into Christ, okay, and you made the announcement, vanity is dead, which caused a yeah. shock wave amongst a lot of Prince fans, okay? Because you yeah. know you had the whole following not only from yourself but from all the people that love Prince. I, I know that you've got all that behind you now, and you gave all that up, and you gave up all that money and everything. Do you think you owe anything to Vanity because because of <laughs> because of having the name? It kind of helped you bring the message to people now, didn't it? Oh well, you know. Uh the Lord always takes something that was, you know, false or fake or whatever. God's able to turn something around. I use my testimony. A lot of people go, a lot of people say, oh, I know, I hear that you hate this and you hate that and you hate being called that. And I don't care if you call. I don't care what you do. I, uh, uh, I don't care if you call me, hey. I, I, that doesn't mean, the only thing that moves me is that by the time I leave your presence, you know who Jesus is. There you go. I, I'm not moved by uh, it, it, all that the ridiculous of it. You know, I, I am I am not um, the same person I was. Yes. I don't dress the same. I don't walk the same. I'm, my insides are not the same. I don't talk the same. I don't think the same. I want to believe that I have more of a mind of Christ now than ever before. And and I, there has been such joy in my life. I live in the form of I was never happy. It's vanity. Vanity, it, it was, I was always being, it was a fake, and I was miserable, and I was depressed. And, you know, I never met anybody that was on drugs that didn't make it into depression. <laughs> I mean, you know, that in alone, that in itself. And then uh, the idolatry of it, I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. I absolutely, it was not okay it's like this. Uh the Bible says, before you were formed in the belly, I knew you. Before you came forth, I had a woman, I sanctified you, ordained you, a prophet of the nations. God knows, and he's made our bodies, he's made our minds, he's made our hearts, he's made everything, he's made our little hands and our fingers, and he's made our mind and our talents, he's placed talents in the man, that if I tap into Jesus, I will know exactly who I'm supposed to be. Mm-hmm. My mind will match up with that. But if I never tap into God... You end up killing yourself because you hate yourself of who you are. You can't believe who you become. That's why people jump off buildings. People kill themselves. They don't. Most people, they have not tapped into Jesus, the only wise God, omnipotent, omnipresent Father, to ask him, excuse me, who am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be? And until we know that, we're always miserable. But when we come to understand who we are in Christ, my goodness, that's, that's a, our soul links up with the heart, our heart links up with the mind, and then we all, and then we all, we're tapping into Christ, and, and we've become, uh, an under, we, we have all understanding. And we gain wisdom, and we gain knowledge because of Christ. 
and what to do and how to act in this world. And we, be, we, we become mature saints. And we become confident in who we are in Christ. I'm not confident in vanity. I'm more confident ever. I'm a thousand times more confident in Christ than I was ever. Vanity was like running around town. Okay, I'll try this and see if this works. Okay, now I'll try that and see if that works. And let's see how many people will follow me doing this stupid stuff. You know? And, and, and that's, it, it's, it's like, and you're always asking people, oh, how was I? Was I good? Mm-hmm. How was, how did, how did you think I was? Was I good? Well, you know? <laughs> I don't sit around asking people that. I know who I am in Christ. Yes. I know that if I'm walking upright before God, I'm going to be happy. Why? Because the Bible says, happy is the man that obeys God. Now, that works for me. Absolutely. All I know is I'm, I'm living happy. I, 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 the, my greatest dream in this whole wide world is that I would, I would go home to Jesus. That's it. If I, mm. if I could go, if the world could end right now and everybody was supposed to be saved, that was supposed to be saved, and we could go home. Oh, my God. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> well, I, I must say this. I must say this, Denise. I'm... I'm I'm, I feel so happy for you, and, and, and praise God, you know that you're where you are. But I will tell you, back in the day, I've never seen anybody that could make Don Cornelius from Soul Train as nervous as you did. <laughs> I know that's the that is that's the truth. I, you know, people played that when he died. Uh, I sure do hope he had Jesus. Every time I see somebody die, I'm like, well, I sure do hope they had Jesus. But if they were still stuck in the world, you see. The world is not going home to Jesus, you know? People that love Jesus, that obey Jesus, that follow Jesus, that live after Jesus, that walk after Jesus, God, Jesus said, if a man keep my sayings, he will not taste death. And so my hope is that people don't die wastefully in this world, that they come to Jesus. I live my life, and that's why I, I, I really decided... I completely committed my life to Jesus in the sense that I don't believe I'll ever be married. I've, I, I've dedicated my life to the Lord this way because I want I want to really make a, a statement to show young people as well older people that are in sin that you can live without this, without sin. Not that you they shouldn't get married. Yeah, get married if you want to get married. I, I've been there, done that. But... I want to show young people, yes, it is possible. It's a sacrificial life, life and love that I do unto Christ. Now, you should, you should never wait, but there's many people that says now that we are absolutely in the end times. Do you believe that the, uh, you know, Jesus is coming soon? Oh, I believe Jesus is coming. When he's coming, it really don't matter because if, 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 if what I want to know, is he coming for you or is he coming for me? Because... We can all die before Christ comes, mm-hmm. right. you know? And so what does it really matter if, if I may die tomorrow? And you'll be saying, hmm, is, is, is he coming soon? Well, he didn't come for me. Then, I mean, here, amen? He said he, he didn't come into the world before. I think that all those that love him are going to be gone from here. I think that the, 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 the seriousness of the tribulations, I don't believe that uh, those that truly are in love with him, those that are walking after Christ are going to be here. And really, I don't even care. I don't, I'm not afraid of death. When, when, when you are confident in the Lord, you walk and love the Lord, uh, that death fear just escapes you. It's like God. So it doesn't matter. What matters is that I save as many souls as I can, uh, doing the work of the Lord while the time that I still am here. And that's all that I think about. Is, do you need to be saved? Do you, are you going to church? Do you have a pastor? Are you troubled? Are you depressed? Can I pray for you? You know, that's, you know, I, 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 it's like I did, I did all those years of vanity, which is such a waste of time. And, 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 and living like that, it's, it's such a waste of time. I, I, um, and you really don't really understand it. Until you uh, you come out, and, and I've been so blessed to uh, to come out. But my story was that I almost died, and so 20 years ago, it's been 20 years now, um, January, 
that I almost died 20 years ago. I had 250 high blood pressure, over 190. I lost both of my kidneys. Didn't you? Didn't you uh, have a uh, Denise? Didn't you have a stroke on, on a movie set? I had a, I had a no, not a stroke on a movie set. Never. I had a heart attack. I had a stroke. I had blood clots on the brain, bleeding internally, uh, completely deaf. No, one ear was deaf. The other one was just a ringing in my ear, and uh, I was blind. And, uh, and um, they said I had three days to live. That was in the hospital. It all happened in the hospital. Nothing ever happened on the set. No, I was always healthy on the set. <laughs> 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 yeah, you talked. Oh, you talked a lot about uh, you know everything that has happened to you in, in the book that you had put out, blamed on vanity. And I wanted to give you a chance because you had mentioned to me in our many conversations that you're working on another book. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Um, I'm I'm working on well, a few things on, in the in the works, but. Um, the the color book that I had done there's like fifteen hundred copies uh, there's only about a couple hundred left so I'm putting out a black and white book of it and with I think color pictures uh, possibly color pictures also in it um, but I'm doing that right now I'm working on that right now it's the same oh, excuse me it's the same life story <laughs> my life story hasn't changed except for it's it's greater in Jesus. Um, I might add some pages. It just depends. Um, but I am also going to put out, uh, you know, a, a, a different book with all of the. I have like four, you know, like four thousand seven hundred and fifty something friends on Facebook, and people write me, and I answer their questions, and I also put out like um like a, a paper, which I I talk about, you know, staying out of fornication. I talk about the things of today and. And I talk about the Lord and, and, and being saved and being saved today and, and how to be saved, how to stay saved today. Amen. And so um, I'm writing writing a lot, and uh, I'm excited about that because I think we're going to turn it into a book. You know, e is, I think I'm going to call it Email Me. Because <laughs> people always they're always emailing me, you know, or, mm-hmm. or Facebooking me. So um, I'm turning them... Like people ask me questions, you know, uh, they may say, I'm gay, I don't know what to do, um, um, am I going to go to hell, blah, 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 blah. I'll answer their questions. And, and, and that's, that's what I do. And I answer the tough questions. Maybe I'll call it tough questions. I don't know. Well, you had but said uh, that. I'm working on. Oh, that's great. You had said that they offered you a lot of money to make your book into a movie and you didn't want to get a right. bunch of money. So. Do you think you'd ever, even if maybe the money went to a church, your church, somebody's church, would you allow it to ever well, be made? It wouldn't be, be, it wouldn't be because of if the, uh, we do it because of the money of any mm-hmm. kind. We, uh, it, it, I didn't really finish the story, but the book that I had written, okay, that God told me to, you know, that it was trash <laughs> and to touch not the unclean thing and touch not don't touch their money. Um, that's not the unclean thing, I'll receive you. Mm-hmm. Now, that particular book, I, I just, I was a babe in Christ. I wrote that within a six month to eight month period. I, I talked about everybody. I was just, uh, I gossiped. I, I just little, 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 little ran my mouth and I wrote a book. <laughs> and it was my, it's like, it's not the book today. Okay. So when I asked the Lord, what should I do with this good book? <laughs> Jesus says, throw it out. Mm. So you threw it <laughs> he out. Says, throw it out. He says, throw it out and grow up. Oh. <laughs> so I, I started going, I, I um, you know, I went, I, of course, continued in, in the church. And after three years, I went out to evangelize, and it, it made me grow up. And I did that for 16 straight years. Uh, I, I, 16, yeah, 16. Yeah, 16 yeah. straight years I did that. And um, that was a grow up right there. And then I was able to understand, you know, that, yeah, that was trash. 
Amen. And I praise God that I didn't write it because I was telling on everybody. If you heard me, I told on you. <laughs> can, can I? I told on everybody. Can, oh, gosh, I hope, they don't, I hope nobody finds that book when I, I, when I, I die. I know, one, <laughs> I know one person in particular that might have been a little bit nervous. Do you talk to Prince at all? <laughs> um, after he read, read my book, like the the better one, of course, mm-hmm. he, he he told me he said he said you're going to write about me, right? He don't let nobody write about him. But uh, I said uh, I don't know. I wasn't thinking. I don't know. Maybe I won't. Maybe I will. He says, "Well, I give you permission. You can write about me if you like." Wow. And so um, those chapters were really nice. Those chapters were good. Amen. And I believe if you got nothing good to say. Don't say it. Now I I I said some of the hard stuff, but it, it uh, you know again I blame it on vanity. Right there you go. <laughs> or or and, and then if you want to get really dirty, you can say blame it on Apollonia. <laughs> I'm just making a joke, Denise. <laughs> you got a funny pop song. <laughs> <laughs> well, Denise, be- before we kind of before we kind of wrap things up, I wanted to ask you really quick because we're gonna call him a call him a lollipop. He's a funny pop. Instead of a funny pop, instead of a lollipop, we'll call him funny pop. That's funny. Wow, that's funny. That's a funny that baloney, huh? Well, you know it's. <laughs> I'm sure you've gotten that a lot. Oh my gosh, weren't you in Purple Rain? <laughs> oh yeah. I, you know, I just got so tired of telling people, no, I wasn't. And they go, oh, I'm sorry, you went purple way. I'm going, <laughs> I look at them, I smile, I say, so tell me, do you know Jesus? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't even tell them because they don't even care. Now, if I told them, no, I wasn't, they're like, sure, you know what? And then we go on with this conversation forever. So now I just say, so tell me, you, do you know Jesus, baby? <laughs> uh, when's the last time you've been to church? <laughs> Can, yeah. can I can I ask you one last Prince question, and I promise it'll be a good one. There's this, there's this, I, I love you, Denise. I love you. There's this. Okay, everybody wants. Did you read the book? Do you guys have my book? Did you read your? Did you buy your daughter the book? We didn't have. We don't have it yet, but we're going to get it. Okay, yeah. now you have to get it. Now right? I have to get it. Because then you'll hear, you'll hear everything about Prince inside. Everybody he wants... There's a whole chapter on it. Okay. A whole chapter on it. I just got to ask you this, and I promise I won't mention Prince again. Okay. <laughs> why, okay, go ahead. Why did you not do Purple Rain? <laughs> See, now that is in the book, and that you're going to have... Now you're going to have to buy it. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> And everybody that wants to know, you're going to have to read the book. There you I'm go. I'm not giving that away. No, no. No, I'm not giving that away. Tell your papa I'm not giving that away. Daddy, she's not giving that away. Denise, I love you. Okay, you are... <laughs> wow. Okay, back to my question. <laughs> Uh, I had spoken to you. I love you guys. You guys are great. Oh, we love you too, Denise. (laughs) I would have thought that you would have been the serious one. (laughs) I I, I thought you would have been the serious one. She would have been. No, no. She would have jumped out my eyes and said, "Go ahead, sweetheart. What do you want me to ask? What do you want me to ask you? What do you want? What do you want to ask me?" (laughs) I had spoken to you uh, around December, and and you had you had gone in depth and talking to me about uh, Christmas the quote-unquote holiday about what some people think and what some people don't think and what's true and what's not. Why? Did you ever look that up, honey? Did you ever look it up? I did. The I, about, I did. The truth about Christmas. And uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you wanted to, to discuss it a little bit now, but I also yeah, kind of... No, really, I just wanted to, I wanted to tell people, you can Google it for yourself and read it, the truth about Christmas. And because you know, we know that Jesus wasn't born in the wintertime. I believe this. I believe God is about truth. And if you're really about truth, then you'll want to know what the truth of Christmas is. I don't believe that we, if it wasn't your birthday, if I said, what, what's your birthday, sweetheart? Tiffany, when's your birthday? Uh, September 21st. Well, you know what? I decided we're going to celebrate it in July. How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> not too fond of that. From now on, okay. From now on when December 21st comes along, we're not even going to acknowledge your presence. <laughs> How's that? How's that? No, that's not... And if Jesus, if Jesus wanted to leave us with a date, he would have given us a date. I believe in truth. 
an absolute truth. I want as much truth in my life as I can get. Mm -hmm. And I believe that Satan, well, well, if you read this, you'll see how Satan has a big part of this. Even Santa, S-A-N-T-A, Satan, S-A-T-A-N, same thing. Even, and, and when we read the knowledge, and see, God gives us wisdom and knowledge. God hates lies. He absolutely hates it. And we built it so big and so fast that it's become idolatry. We have to run out and buy presents. We think that's going to make us love people. And as a matter of fact, the church goes broke around Christmas time because we're giving all the money to each other. You know, it's just it's that. But if you read it, there's so much to dig into this. There's so much knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Boy, you know, I give all year round. I don't, at Christmas, it's just me and Jesus at home. I'm not, I'm not saying happy birthday to you. I'm not. I'm not, you know, I'm not singing to him happy birthday to you. I'm praising him just like every, because and when we read about this, and we, we uh, Samiramis was, uh, uh, she married her, her, her son, Nimrod. And Nimrod's birthday was December the 25th, and he was an evil, they called him the son of Baal. He was the son of the devil. And that's where that whole Christmas tree thing came from. They, they, they killed Nimrod because he was a wicked king. And he married his, he had married, like I said, his mother, the Mary Miss. They called her the Queen of Heaven. She's in the book of Jeremiah. Read about it. And God says, don't, for the rest of the generations, whatever you should do, do not worship me the way that you worship Nimrod. Don't do, don't celebrate me. That's why when, when Paul came, Paul was like, I'm afraid of you. He said, I'm afraid of you all that celebrate me. Times and seasons and dates, and he just God said that he would. <laughs> uh, he wasn't going to like me after this. That doesn't really matter. I, I want you to love Christ more. Mm -hmm. But the Bible talks about it in the Book of Jeremiah. It talks about it in Isaiah, and, 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 it, and it, it talks about the tree going and forth. Cut down the tree. We cut down our oxygen that God gave us, and we drag the tree. And it's so sad. The you see these hallways covered with the uh, thistle, and you see the you see the hallways that you know, and, and the apartment buildings cut, and the trees are thrown in the garbage and and dying, and and, and it's just this is our oxygen that God has blessed us. But the Bible says, man goes into the forest, cuts down the tree, um, uh, drags it into the house, sets it up on like silk that it doesn't move and decks it with silver and gold. He said, do not do as the heathen do. Don't do this. And that that's all the whole dress up of... And Samiramis, going way back, even prior to that, Samiramis lied and concocted this, um, this story about Nimrod, who was her son, who had died, and said, Nimrod came in the middle of the night and grew this whole tree. It was a stump, and he grew this whole tree. And look, he stuck all these presents all over it. And he says, and from now on, you got to worship him, because he's right here, and you got to worship him. And every year, he's going to leave presents for you. And then they began to do that. Guess what? It's 2012. They're still doing stupid stuff like this. Yeah, they sure and, are. And you know what? Once we get to, once we understand, Jesus, said, the Lord God said, "Don't do this. Don't do it. And if you do it, and if you do it, I'm going to kill you." And I, you know. I believe we're going to be judged for, for things like this if we don't wake up. Yeah. God is not into lies, you know? For sure. I mean, he's just not into lies. And yeah. I, so uh, just, be, just that fact alone, he didn't leave not one man in this whole entire earth. He didn't even give us a date. He said to celebrate his death. We drink his blood. We eat his body. He never, ever... Now, when the, when the three wise men came to see the baby... Just to clear this up of the mind, because you'll also read this, read the truth about Christmas. Just Google that. The plain truth about Christmas. The plain truth about, let me say it third time. The plain truth about Christmas. And when, when the three wise men came to visit Jesus, um, in, in the manger, Jesus was already, he's a, 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 could have been a month old, two months old, whatever, but, and, 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 and I heard a new and something else that was new. Actually, it wasn't even a, a, a the manger was a wine cellar. Hmm. It wasn't even a barn. Really? I, 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 before that, I heard some 
some truth about that, that it wasn't even that. That's a whole nother. I'm like, wow. It's just getting you. The more you search for truth, the more you're going to find. Oh, Take me. That's just like I recently when, when Harold Camping actually gave a date that the resurrection was supposed to come. You know, we don't have a date. Oh, know? God. You know, it's just so not The whole story about Harold Camping, that, that whole. What really is sad is all that money that people put out and wasted yeah. that we we can't feed our children and we're giving to the Harold Camping yeah. uh, and to put up signs that are lies. It's, it's, it's Satan is working. And here's the sad part, that he didn't just do it once to the people. He did it twice. Yes. Yeah. You know, he did it twice. He he fooled the people twice. And you got to you got to wonder how the people, they gave up their houses. They mm-hmm. gave up, the, some of them didn't even know what they, they let go of their dogs, they put their dogs and their cats to sleep, thinking that they're going to, they're going to go, they're going to leave with Jesus. And it's just so sad that Satan, that this is all wrapped up, this is Satan's word, this is satanic worship to its purest form. Yes. And it's just so sad because all that money that was wasted, millions and millions, some, what was that, $36 million the guy right. collected? For sure. Mm-hmm. On, on, to put up posters? What about the children that are dying, for, like starving, even in our great America? It, it just, it gets overwhelming. And then Jesus come, that's all I can say, Jesus come. Yeah. Well, Denise, I want to I want to thank you so much for joining us. Before we go, uh, just I'm not finished. We're going to talk to the end of the night. <laughs> well, we want we want to give her a chance. You got me on the phone. Now you want to get me on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think we I'm should. Denise, if you ever We're come down, the, if you ever come, <laughs> if you oh, what, what have you? What we'll fake till Jesus come? <laughs> If you if you ever get down here to Southern California, you can come down and visit us. You can be here all night. Oh, thank you. He's just going to ask me all those questions. <laughs> I'll have to answer all them questions. Then you probably hear more. You'll probably hear more than anybody. Denise, <laughs> if you would grace the presence of our radio station studio, I promise not to use the p word. <laughs> Which is uh, the I mean, Prince word. Yeah, yeah, I don't know who said that that you couldn't, but you, yeah, people are allowed to ask me questions about that. I have no problem with oh, that. I've never had any problem. People thought because I left Vanity that I never wanted to ever, you know, I, I don't like to gossip. I wouldn't tell you gossip, but, you know, I have some great stories. <laughs> oh, gee, you're going to leave me hanging with that? <laughs> We, we got to have you, you back on. So I want, you, I want you right now to tell, I want you to do two things for me real quick. I want you, well, not real quick on the latter, but on the first. Tell people how they can get a hold of you and how they can get your book. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. then when you're yeah, done, please. then when you're done, just one second, then when you're done, I want you to end with a prayer. Oh, praise the Lord. I can do that. Love to pray. We have a prayer line. Let me tell you about this first. We have a prayer line. Um, I pray on Friday, so anybody can contact me, and anybody can get hold of me if you want me to pray for you. Um, it's at uh, 6 till 7 in the morning, every morning, Monday through Friday, and I'll give you the number, um, and I'll repeat it again, so you might want to write it down. It's area code 724-444-7444. Again, that's 724 444 Seven four four four, and it's free. Okay, so you can go on Monday through Friday. We do a prayer every morning, and at six forty-five, we open up the line. And if you have a prayer request, we will take it and 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 we'll talk. Okay, and um, I'll minister to you in prayer. Um, the, also, the code number to that is eight six one zero one pound sign. Okay. Again, that's eight six one zero one pound sign. If you guys ever want to. Tell anybody if they want to pray. And also you can go on TalkShoe.com. TalkShoe.com. And, and uh, in the search bar, JC Fans. Just put, uh, just put in JC Fans. And uh, that will come up. That will come up. And, and then you'll press on the little purple thing. And, and then you can listen to the prayer. Oh, great. Uh, you know, you, yeah, you can listen. Listen in on. Okay. And uh, also, you can get me, you get my book. Uh, there's just a few more hundred copies, so you should get it as soon as you can because they're going fast. And they're given to the five star. You can also get it on Amazon, but um, it's called Blame It on Vanity. 
And uh, you, if you go to blameitonvanity.com, you can get it there. It's a little bit cheaper on my site, um, but uh, you're going to get it autographed. I will autograph every copy. You have to go to PayPal. If you go to my site, blameitonvanity.com, like I said, it's a little cheaper, and you pay by PayPal, okay? And, um, it's, uh, yeah, and it's available right now. And you just you know, give me your name, and, and you'll leave all your information, and I'll send you the book. And it should get with you, to you within a week, two weeks at the maximum, depending on how many orders I have. All right? And um, is there anything else? Again, that, that prayer line, because, you know, we need to get to prayer. Prayer is the most important thing that's going to happen in your life. And God will answer your prayers all through the day, every day. And, and, and it, 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 it's so vitally that that becomes, you know, a, a big part of your life. And then I'm available to do that. I pray on Fridays. Fridays is mine. Uh, a couple of other pastors pray on Monday. Uh, my pastors are Willie and Roxanne Harper. She does Wednesday. We also have Wednesday night Bible study. So you can get us also at 7 p.m. Bible study, okay? And on Monday through Friday, in the morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., uh, 7 a.m. And then also in the evening, 6 to 7 on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Wednesday night Bible study, okay? Mm-hmm. So, amen, so I hope you got all that. Now, let's just, uh, wherever you are, lift up your hands in prayer. Let me just pray. Heavenly Father, oh, precious, precious Jesus, we love you so much, and we lift up your name tonight, Lord God. You're powerful, powerful. You're so powerful, and you're such a loving, kind God. And, and we look to you, the author the finisher of our faith, Lord. We look to you to know all truth. You said, if a man keep my sayings, he will not taste death. Oh, Lord, we look to you, Father, for all the truth that we need in this life, Father. And we're thankful. We're so thankful as we come into your presence with thanksgiving into your courts with praise, Lord God. Wherever we are all over this earth, Lord, we lift up Israel, Father, to you tonight. We lift them up, Lord God, cause them to run to you, to run into your arms, Lord, to run into your bosom, Father. For you love them that love Israel, Lord, and we love Israel. Father, we pray for the children all over this earth, Father. We pray, Jesus, that you would, oh, keep them and bless them and touch them and heal them and deliver them. I pray for the the young people of today. I I, I pray for those that are having problems, that, that, that are even thinking about suicide, that are thinking, oh, why are they here? Lord, I pray that you touch each one of them and that you cause them to come, Lord God. I pray that we say that that we get out there and minister to those that are on the highways and the byways that are so ready to fall in your arms, Lord God. Oh, you said let uh, uh, it is so much easier and so much better and rewarding that we fall on the rock and the rock does not fall on us. And Jesus, you are that rock. We give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord. We thank you. We bless you, Lord Jesus. I, I pray that all that are listening, that, that are listening, that understand, really come to understand that you are not about idolatry, Father, and you are calling us to come away from idolatry, to t- come away from worshiping um, celebrities, come away from, from drugs and fornication, come away from all these, these spirits, these dead spirits, spirits that are trying to overtake even the body of Christ, Lord God, I I lift up the body, I lift up those that are lost, Father, for you said, Jesus, that you would run to the the one, leave the 99 and run to that one that was looking and seeking after you. Father, I pray somebody hears this and, 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 uh, and, 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 and cries out to you with a great cry because they're looking for you, and, and that they don't touch death, Lord God, but that they run after you and hear from you and adhere to your word. Lord, you are the liver. We thank you. You are our prosperity. You are our first and truest and only greatest love, Lord God. We will not bow our, down our heads nor worship no other gods, nor put no other gods before you, Jesus. You are the 
son that was born. You are the child that was given. The government is still upon your shoulder. You are the wonderful counselor. You are the mighty God and the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the God that ever lived, the omnipotent, omnipresent Savior. You are the Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tiskanu, you are Jehovah Mekadesh. You, are, you transform us. You make us. You shape us, you break us, and then you deliver us, and you love us right to the very end, Lord God. I pray, Lord Jesus, everybody that's listening to this prayer, that they cry after you, that they run after you, and that they make no mistake to find you, Lord God. I pray that as long as we seek you, we will continue to find you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we love you. We love you tonight. We thank you. Oh, we love you so much. We adore you. You are my passion, Father. You are my reason for living, Lord Jesus. And I pray that you would help me to save more souls while I'm alive, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I lift up my new friends, Father. I lift up Tiffany. I lift up her daddy. I lift them up to you, Lord God. Strengthen them in the faith. Oh, boy, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I pray that they be strengthened in their words day after day after day, and in their prayers, in the name of Jesus, all those that are attached to them, all those that, that love them, Father, oh, we pray that they be healed and that they be delivered in the name of Jesus and that we see them in heaven. Amen and amen, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Denise. That meant a lot. So we hope we can have you on again sometime. It was such a pleasure to be able to allow you this time to be able to give your message. Oh, thank you. It was wonderful. Thank you. I had a great time. Amen. I had a great time. Thank and, you. God and you, bless you. And you can tell your little friend Prince that we'll allow him to come on sometime too if he'd like <laughs> <Yeah>. to. <laughs> little, little friend, little friend Prince. That's funny. <laughs> I will keep it. I will. I don't like that very much. <laughs> <laughs> I will keep in touch with you, Denise. Uh, you, I'll you, do that, Stephanie. God bless you. I love you, darling. God bless you, too. We'll talk to you later. Have a wonderful night, Denise. Thank you, baby. Right. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.